My good people, we have returned. And as you can probably tell, we've had a little change of scenery. So let me welcome you all to the Department of Hopaganda, your truth or untruth on all things craft, where we'll continue to bring you a little taste of all the hottest brews cooling the fridges of London. And today we have one of London's finest, as today's offering comes from the good folk at Pressure Drop. From the early pale fire days to the joint venture with the equally brilliant Verdant, Pressure Drop have slowly ascended their way to the very top of the craft beer landscape. While their counterparts at the time were hitting the pavements, trying hard to get their beer seen, Pressure Drop, like the true alchemists they are, remained hidden away, slowly perfecting the craft. And boy, has it been worth it. Now October is actually pizza month, if you didn't know, although it will easily be November before this review sees the light of day. But I'm gonna keep the theme of Pizza Month alive with a little Donatella's Disco Night. And I've gotta warn you, this slice comes with extra pineapple. And here she is, a big New England dipper, weighing at about 8.5%. Now, going through my untapped a little earlier, I discovered I'd already had this once before, and it ranked quite nicely on that day, as you'd probably expect. So at least we know we won't be disappointed, not that there was ever any fear of that, as it's brewed with two of my personal favourites, the ID7 and the Brew 1. They themselves describe it as being tropical, piney, a little resinous, and also just a little bit dank. All the things we all love. So let's get some Donna Summers in the headphones and enjoy this disco night. Donatella style. And I haven't had a chance to say this for a while. Let's get pouring. And as well as the new look setup, I got myself a new fridge, and I tell you what, I might have to turn it down a little because this is very, very icy to the touch. Oh yeah, that is still pretty damn icy, but a lot of tropical notes up top as you expect. And again, as they mentioned, it is a little bit resinous. And yeah, there is that subtle dankness in the back. A little bit of stone fruit maybe also. And that pineapple does have just a little sharpness to it. And I tell you what, those bottom notes, that alcohol and dankness, they come together in almost a bready sort of way, really adding to the pizza vibe they're going for. So now the pizza's had a chance to defrost, sorry guys, didn't mean to massacre your beer. Some of the fuller flavours are starting to come through. Those tropical notes right up top, and there is, like I said, a little stony fruit, almost subtle raisin notes in there, bringing along, bringing that alcohol with it. Leaving behind this bitter sweet aftertaste. And as we're right down into the beer now, those sweet tangy pineapple notes of earlier have become almost musty as that dankness really starts to take hold. And there's even a little creaminess hidden in the tail. As expected, there's a whole lot of pineapple up top and it remains ever present throughout. It starts clean, sharp and almost tangy but becomes musty and dank the deeper you dive. There are some subtle resinous notes in there as well, and coupled with that weight of alcohol, really gives it a bready, almost doughy feel. Some would say, almost pizza base like And I picked up some stone fruit and some raisin notes in the middles there too. I'm guessing that's from that alcohol. 
and in this age of big dippers and huge tippers, this one really does hold its own. Or maybe that's just my layoff talking. And although it ticks all the boxes and lives up to that billing, I never at any point felt blown away. As dippers aren't exactly the sessionable option, I always feel they need to have that extra wow factor. And for as solid and enjoyable as this was, it was just lacking that extra something. That said, my fridge definitely did tamper with the evidence, so maybe this trial is null and void.